P.S. I Still Love You is a great book title. The only downside is that the title doesn't appear in the book. Laura Jean writes multiple letters, but none of them have a P.S. That's a weird oversight. Argofonk book review, Argofonk book review. The last book ended with Laura Jean Covey and her fake boyfriend Peter Kavinsky breaking up because she's not ready to start dating for real. After a week of being apart, she knows she still loves him and never wants to forget him. So she writes him a letter and tries to deliver it, but she chickens out. The two of them have a fight until Peter sees the letter, he steals it, reads it, and confesses he still loves her! He was just playing hard to get. The two of them kiss so passionately, she's lost in the feelings. As for Josh... Bad news for everyone who wanted Laura Jean to end up with Josh. He only shows up for about two pages in this book. He breaks Margot's heart, starts dating another girl, and basically disappears. I'm not too sad about this, because it was always kind of creepy for Laura Jean to have a thing for her sister's ex-boyfriend. Laura Jean feels a lot of pressure when she and Peter go on their first real date. His ex-girlfriend Genevieve half ruins the date, and Laura Jean laments that Peter is still obsessed with Jen. He comes running whenever she calls, which is often. She claims she's having huge family drama, but that's some pretty convenient timing on her part. Laura Jean and Peter write up a new contract. They promise to always tell each other the truth and to never break each other's hearts. Someone anonymously posts a video of Laura Jean and Peter making out in a hot tub. The entire school watches the video, even the teachers. Pretty much everyone assumes they're having sex. Laura Jean is horrified. Peter is less horrified, as he's been through this before. Someone once posted a naked picture of him with his head in a toilet. Oh, uh, what? Why was he- You know what? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Peter gets the video taken down, but that doesn't stop things. Someone makes a ton of memes out of it, and plays it during a school assembly. Peter steals the microphone and starts cussing out the entire school, which mostly brings an end to the video drama. A month or so later, it resurfaces with a remixed Disney song. I don't remember a hot tub makeout scene in The Little Mermaid. Dad learns about the video at this point, and I guess it says a lot about Dad that he knows the Disney remix before the original. Laura Jean is pretty sure Genevieve is responsible for the video. When Laura Jean confronts her, Genevieve's mouth turns up, which is her tell that she's lying. Sadly, Peter takes Genevieve's side because Genevieve is having that family drama. Sorry, but family drama doesn't excuse publicly shaming other students. Laura Jean starts volunteering at a retirement home, where she meets a rambunctious old woman named Stormy. Stormy gives Laura Jean all sorts of dating advice, some of it scandalous. Laura Jean decides she kind of likes the older style of dating a lot of guys at once. The casualness of it all helps prevent against heartbreak. In another subplot, Kitty tries to set Dad up with their neighbor, who lives across the street. Dad is too clueless to realize what's going on, I'm guessing he's too busy watching Disney Plus to worry about his love life. Laura Jean talks with the neighbor and dad, separately. He agrees to take her out for coffee. On Valentine's Day, Peter gives Laura Jean a fancy necklace and a plagiarized love poem. About halfway through the book, Laura Jean gets a letter from John Ambrose McLaren, one of the boys she loved before. He was her middle school crush, he still remembers her and likes her, and they become good pen pals. He explains he didn't get her love letter in the previous book until just now. It took six months for the letter to get forwarded to him? And I thought my mail system was slow. Laura Jean's neighbor was Carolyn Pierce. This caught me by surprise because Carolyn Pierce, spelled the exact same way, is a neighbor character from Sweet Valley High. Just like Laura Jean, Carolyn wrote love letters, which resulted in a guy pretending to be her boyfriend, which eventually led to a real relationship. That's a pretty big coincidence, huh? Anyway, Laura Jean and her friends made a time capsule at Carolyn's treehouse. Everyone comes back to dig it up, and they decide to play a game called Assassins. The goal is to tag out everyone else in the group. 
Whoever wins gets to have their wish come true. Laura Jean becomes obsessed with winning the game, or at least making sure Genevieve loses. Who knows what sort of weird wish she'd make up. Peter and Laura Jean have some minor love drama, in part because they have to avoid each other due to the game. He's kind of upset that she didn't tell John they're a couple, and he wants her to dress up for all of his sports games, even though she doesn't care about sports. Laura Jean and John meet by chance at the retirement home. He confesses he tried to ask her out to the 8th grade formal, only clueless Dad messed up. Dad misunderstood the situation and thought John was asking if he could do some yard work. Dad. A freak snowstorm traps them at the retirement home together, and they have fun playing in the snow. Laura Jean plans to meet Peter at one of his games, but he doesn't show up. She sees him at home hugging Genevieve. Laura Jean officially breaks up with Peter at this point. He tries to defend himself, but he just makes things worse by revealing he's been keeping at least three big secrets about Genevieve. John makes it clear that he likes Laura Jean, Kitty has a birthday party, and there's a party at the retirement home. John and Laura Jean show up in authentic 1940s outfits and do fancy dancing together. She feels like she's floating until Peter and Genevieve show up to ruin everything. Is Genevieve stalking Laura Jean or what? John and Laura Jean escape in his car, and he kisses her at a stoplight. Laura Jean feels like she's halfway to loving him. She has a confrontation with Peter at a school function, and he makes a power play for Laura Jean on her birthday right in front of John. While it's romantic that he's willing to fight for their love, it's also creepy and controlling that he refuses to accept they broke up because he's not done with her yet. Laura Jean discovers that Genevieve has legitimate family drama. Her father is having an affair with an 18-year-old. Laura tries to patch things up with Genevieve, but Jen has none of it. She cusses Laura Jean out. It's revealed Genevieve saw Peter kiss Laura Jean five years ago after a game of spin the bottle. Genevieve misunderstood the situation as Laura Jean trying to steal her boyfriend. She's hated Laura Jean ever since. Laura Jean is sympathetic to Genevieve's position here, but I'm not. It should have taken Jen 10 minutes to realize the truth, and Jen has been so relentless in pursuing revenge for years. It's so completely disproportionate, I can't sympathize with Jen. She's still an evil villain. Laura Jean and Peter agree to start dating again. No more holding back out of fear of a broken heart. They kiss passionately, knowing their love is becoming real. The end. Post-book follow-up. The first part of this book is fantastic. I can see why they used it as the ending to the first movie. It is good stuff. But then Margot leaves, and the book becomes somewhat aimless until John appears. I like John. He's sweet. I am on Team John all the way. He's the only one who hasn't slept with Laura Jean's worst enemy or her sister. I liked how Laura Jean's relationship with John grew slowly. It felt realistic. I didn't quite like how Laura Jean's relationship with Peter fell apart after John showed up. I've seen this happen with a lot of love triangles. Whenever a new love interest is introduced, the established love interest suddenly turns into a jerk who pushes the main character away. I personally would have preferred it if both Peter and John were nice to Laura Jean. The book has too much swearing for my taste. It pulls me out of the story when Peter starts swearing during love scenes. Same with 10-year-old Kitty and Laura Jean's best friend Chris, who continues to have nothing in common with her. Why are they friends? If the book could tone down the swearing by, like, 20%, that would be appreciated. Laura Jean herself never swears. I'd say this is a good follow-up to the previous book. John was interesting. Kitty was good, too. I wasn't too keen on the subplots with Dad and the nursing home. They work fine, I just wasn't that interested in them. The ending with Genevieve was dramatic, but I don't like how Laura Jean reacted. Yes, Jen is having a hard time right now. She still tried to steal your boyfriend and ruin your life with a dirty video repeatedly. That is not a forgive and forget situation. I give P.S. 
I still love you. A 7 out of 10.